people. Greetings, guzzlers. Welcome back to a crazy episode of Ben Buys Beverages. And there's my cameraman right there. I've extended the range of the camera because... He got a cool spear. That's right. As a birthday brother, present, oh. Owen Buys Beverages had a boar spear sent to my house. Look at this. I don't even stand up. It's taller than I am. And I clock in at a healthy 5'9". An average 5'9", I won't lie. All right. Anyhow, so I've got this Viking-esque spear. I have no idea what I'll do with it. Probably nothing good. I probably won't hunt boars with it either. But fun fact, the little crossbar here is because boars are mean and ugly and stupid. And it'll run right up the spear to stab whoever stabbed it. And uh, so it's a little safety thing with the crossbar. So since I got that cool Viking spear, I thought I would try a little bit of Nithauger Mead. This is a gift from friend of the channel, Randall Buys Beverages. Um, and I think I pronounced the F correctly. You can't really tell there. It's, it's a letter that we don't use in the English alphabet. The uh, D looking thing. Anyhow... Let me figure out how to open it while I talk, because I'm feeling all Viking-y, and uh, nothing says Viking to me more than mead. Well, except maybe, maybe, looting monasteries, but I'm not going to do that on video, because that's silly. All right, let's crack this open, this apple rhubarb mead. Ah, wow, this is going to be fun. Oh, it smells funky in a good way. Oh, and for the record, this comes out of, well, it's .co.uk, so it's somewhere out of England, out of York, 15% alcohol. Let's pour it in Old Faithful here. I, I got a bold swordsman behind me to join us. Oh, he got me. He got me good. You can smell, you can smell more of the rhubarb than the than the apple and if you've never tried rhubarb you should try it's pretty tasty as a yankee i grew up eating it so thank you mom buys beverages beef buys beverages is also in here on the floor that's right there's a cat out of you oh that's exciting oh it's good it's smooth um and it's scary like the skull behind me so i've got all all this, I thought, I may as well bring a, a poem as well. There, I taste the apple. It took a minute, more of the aftertaste. I'll pour some more, so I'm going to do a bit of reading. Oh, and I can taste the honey. Oh, this is delicious. Anyhow, this poem that I'm going to read is rather long. However, don't let that fool you. It's rather awesome. It comes from the book Silverlock. By John Myers Myers. And if you've never read this book, it is just chock full of references to other books, other poems, and other things. But not puppies. Anyhow, Jack's going to sit down and let me read this poem. It's called The Death of Bowie Gizzardbane. And if you're familiar with U.S. history, specifically, oh, I don't know, the Alamo, You'll probably recognize this, despite the fact that it's written like a good piece of Anglo-Saxon poetry, uh, in that it's full of, of kennings and alliteration and lots of good, proper Anglo-Saxon boasting. So let me shift here, and I will give you The Death of Bowie Gizzardbane. Harsh that hearing for Houston the Raven. Fools had enfeebled the fortress at Bazar. Leaving it lacking and looted the while, hordes were sweeping swift on his land, hell-bent to crush him. The cunning old prince did not, though, despair at dangers on rushing. Hardy with peril, he held it, perused it, reading each rune of it. Reaching the facts, he thumbed through his thanes and thought of the one whose guts and gray matter were grafted most neatly. Riders, he rasped, to race after Bowie, Bowie, he barked when that bear cat of heroes bowed to his loved prince. Bazaar must be ours, or no one must have it. So hightail, burn leather, 
Hold me that fortress, or fire it and raise it. Do what you can, or else do what you must. How about that line? Fame has its fosterlings, free of the limits, boxing all others, and Bowie was one of them. Who has not heard of the home gang at Natchez? Fifty were warriors, but he fought the best, wielding a long knife, a nun such of daggers, worthy of Wayland. That weapon had chewed the entrails of dozens. In divers pitched battles, that thane had been leader by land and by sea, winning such treasure that trolls, it is said, closed hills out of fear, he'd frisk them of silver. Racing now westward, he rode into Bazar, gathered the garrison, gave them his orders. Houston the Raven is raising a host. Times when he asks while he tempers an army, never give up this gate to our land, hold this door fast, though death comes against us. The flood of the foemen flowed up to Bazar, beat on the dam, braced there to contain it. But Weird has no fosterlings, favors no clients. Bowie, the war-wise winner of battles, laid out by fever, lost his first combat, melting with death. Yet the might of his spirit kept a tight grip on the trust he'd been given. By time, my bucks, he told his companions, be proud of the price our prince is the gainer. Bold thanes were with him, thirsty for honor, schooled well in battle and skilled in all weapons, avid for slaughter there. Each against thirty, they stood to the walls and struck for their chieftains, Houston and Bowie, the bearcat of heroes. Twelve days they ravaged the ranks of the foemen, tens though can't harrow the hundreds forever, that tide had to turn. Tiredly the thanes blocked two wild stormings and bled them to death. The third had the drive of Thor's mighty hammer, roared at the walls and rose to spill over, winning the fort. But the foemen must pay. Heroes were waiting them, hardy at killing, shaken no wit, though sure they were lost. Ten lives for one was the tariff for entry, and no man got credit. Crushed and split skulls, blasted off limbs and lathers of blood were the money they sotted and minted themselves, worth every ounce of the ware guild they asked. Of every eleven, though, one was a hero, turned to a corpse there. Cornered and helpless, they strove while they yet stood, stabbing and throttling, meeting the bear's death, dying while fighting, chieftains of prowess, not chary of slaying, led and fell with them, alone by the wall, Travis, the red-maned, the truest of warriors, pierced through the pate and pouring out blood, kept death-marking time, defied it until his sword again sank, sucking blood from a foeman. Content then he ended, so also died Crockett, who shaved with a star and stamped to make earthquakes, Kimball, the leader of loyal riders, Bonham, whose vow was Valor's own hallmark. Crazed by their losses, the conquerors offered no truce to cadavers, the Corpses were stabbed in hope that life's spark would be spared to afford them. Seconds on killing, then some taking count bought out that Bowie was balking them still. Like weasels and warrens, they wound through the fort, hunting the hero they hated the most. Least of the lucky, at last some found him. Fettered to bed by the fever and dying, burnt up and shrunken, a shred of himself. Gladly they rushed him, but glee became panic. Up from the grip of the grave, gripping weapons, Gizzardbane rose to wreak his last slaughter, killing though killed. Conquered he won, in brief, is the death lay of Bowie the leader, who laid down his life for his lord and ring-giver, holding the doorway for Houston the raven, pearl among princes, who paid in the sequel. Never was vassal avenged with more slayings. Wow! I was going to save that until the anniversary of the Alamo, but this wonderful spear changed everything. And that's really what spears do to people. Once they come into your life, they change things. Hopefully for the better and not because somebody ran you through with it. Regardless, folks, on that note, I give this lovely me 10 out of 10. And the spear, 11 out of 10. Poem, 10 out of 10. It's just a wonderful night. So a 10 out of a 10 evening for you as well. And my handy cameraman. Cheers!